Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and joining me is Cam Valentine. We've added Durac Live capabilities to newer select Denon Amaranth AVRs and we want to take a little bit of time and walk you through the setup process step by step. So the 4800H is one of the Denon AVRs that support Durac Live. So we're going to go through and show you step by step how to set it up. First thing we need to do is look at the menu system and see if Direct Live is available. Okay. So if you so right now if you click in the speakers, you'll see that it says Odyssey, Manual, and Direct Live. What if my screen doesn't say Direct Live? Okay, so and that could happen if you have say you have a um, an AVR, a newer AVR that qualifies for this, and you don't see uh, Direct Live. Most likely you need to go through and check your firmware. So so go back on the menu and go down to general and then and then go down to where you see firmware you click in there so the first thing is you can check the firmware so when you hit that button cam okay what does it say no update required latest version is installed exactly so if you go here and you don't see that that tells you that you probably need to do a firmware update okay so question may be you know why would it be there so if you go back there's two other things on there okay what does auto update okay go down there and hit that one and the nice thing is about these new menu systems they kind of explain at the bottom what's going on you turn on this for future updates are done automatically and installed um, when the unit is in standby mode and why would someone not want auto update on a lot of times when you have guys that are doing custom install um, they don't want the auto update on because it, it, uh, it, may, it may affect their control system or, or things like that. So they may opt to turn this off to make, so they can determine what updates they want to add to a client's home. So sometimes they may have this turned off. Go ahead. There's another option called allow updates. So what does allow update do? Okay, so let's go down and look at that one. Auto update is do you want to be notified about it? And then the other one is, do you want it to be done automatically? But if you also, if you go back and you go down to information and click in there and go down to firmware, you can check the firmware that's built into the receiver. And so if you go back into speakers, you have your Dirac Live, right? And if you click that in, it will bring up this screen. By the way, uh, if you have a Marantz receiver like you and I have, mm -hmm. um, that screen will still exist but the graphics look, look a little different. So whether okay. you have a Denon or Marantz receiver that's compatible with Direct Live, the walkthrough process, the setup process, even the, the wording on the screen is going to be very similar. It just may be laid out differently cosmetically. So the first screen tells you, under the setup screen, will tell you, you know, what is Direct Live, what is the benefits of Direct Live, and what you can do, like target curves. And you can even learn more by using this QR code at the bottom to check it out in the manual. Okay. Now, if you go to the next page, the next page is how do you get it and how do you set it up. Okay. So, so you'll see right here it says, go to Direct.com backslash Denon. So, Cam, I'm going to have you go into the computer. And when we go there, you can see that what, what models are actually available. So if you look here, you'll see that there's, uh, it's available on the A1H and the 3800 and the 4800. Say, what if I have a Marantz? So type in directlive.com backslash Marantz. And what this will do will bring up a dedicated page for Marantz. So if you had a Marantz, that setup menu, it would say, go to direct.com backslash Marantz to get this particular information. But when we're on here, you can see that that lists the receivers that are available and the products that are available from Marantz, um, AV10, Cinema 40, and Cinema 50. So what if I have an older unit? Will it work on that? We always try to uh, add updates or firm, um, via firmware to add new capabilities to our AVRs. Like we've done it for DTS-X and, and other things um, in the past. But sometimes these um, new features require a new, a new type of hardware inside of the AVR. And if you look at these new receivers, they have like four subwoofer outs and they have directional base. All of that is because it's got a bigger brain in it. Okay. okay, and that bigger brain allows us to run both Odyssey and Durac. So right now it's available on the newer models, and these are the models that it is available on. 
Got it. And which receiver do we have, Cam? We have a Denon, so go back into the Denon. And which one do we have? The AVR X4800H. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the, the 4800, click Get License. And what it's going to show you is all of the different licenses available on the um, 4800. So scroll down and let's look at the licenses that are available. So you can see that there is a Durac limited bandwidth and a Durac full bandwidth. So why are there two different versions? There is a limited bandwidth and that's more for adjusting bass or frequencies up to 500. A lot of AV enthusiasts and even some speaker designers, they say the biggest problem you're going to have in a room is bass. Um, so work on the bass and don't mess with the high frequency. And that is where Dirac Live Limited comes in. I believe, and Dirac also agrees, that the full may be the way to go. Because now you can take advantage of not only correcting frequency issues and phase and, and problems in your room for bass, but you also can take advantage of all that impulse control and everything all the way up through your, your high frequencies. I think that you end up with a, uh, a more focused um, center image and it's a little bit more defined. I don't think it affects the overall character of the speaker. I just think it makes your speaker sound more like the speaker you paid for. Okay. So, but, that's, but the nice thing about it is you can start with the $259 limited. And if you decide you want to move up to the full, you notice at the bottom it says that you can upgrade from limited to full for $99. Okay, so, so I'm wondering, why do I have to pay for this when it comes with Odyssey for free? Exactly. So if you look at some companies, um, most, uh, most audio companies have some sort of um, room correction built in. And most of them are utilizing third-party vendors, such as um, maybe Odyssey or, or Durac. So those companies are not owned by um, Marantz or Denon. So a Marantz or a Denon will have to go in and pay for the licensing because Durac has engineering, Odyssey has engineering. They have their own research facilities, their own software engineers, and the way they make their, 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 their living is by selling licenses to manufacturers. We cover the license for Odyssey. Odyssey is still going to be our in-the-box partner and will continue to be our in-the-box partner. It's integrated into our setup assistant. It comes with the microphone in the box. And we chose Odyssey because it's simple to use, it delivers spectacular performance, and it fits the needs of a lot of different customers. Okay. Now, of course, you could take Odyssey and there's, you can make it better by buying the $20 app, you know, um, or you can go up and do something like Multi-Q Pro, which costs 200 and something bucks. Because Odyssey developed that, and the and the licensing for that multi -Q, um, X, multi Q X Pro software that you would be utilizing, they have to cover that cost. Okay. When it comes to Durac, we did we covered the integration with our receiver, but the licensing that needs to be that's going to be covered by the consumer because we've already covered one license. Someone else has to cover the other one. The analogy I use, Cam, who we were talking about yesterday, is. Say you, um, I want a lobster dinner, and you want a you want a steak, right? Both meals cost you know thirty bucks, um, and uh, but it, all of a sudden now you want a steak and lobster dinner. Okay. It's not going to be the same price as just the lobster dinner, or just or just the steak dinner. If you want both, they're both exceptional. Just like Durac and Odyssey have benefits, you have to pay for the the the, the additional cost because someone has to pay. And, and either we raise the price for the AVR for everyone, or we give people the option you want that expandability to pay for it themselves. Okay, so for those who want it, mm -hmm. they can pay for it versus raising the overall price of the receiver for, for everyone. everyone the because board. somebody, we would have to cover the cost of that license. And if we put it on every receiver, we would have to raise the price on every receiver, whether you're an Odyssey person or a Dirac person. Okay, makes sense. Now, you could, you could go in here and buy a license from this page. But before you do that, you need to, have a, you need to log in or have a password or an account. Okay. The, the license, by the way, is linked to your account and the receiver that it's, it's assigned to. Okay. So, so the first thing is you've got to generate an account. So if you go up to the login, the login is where you would make your account. If it says, I don't have an account, you would go there. Uh, and that doesn't matter whether you're a Marantz customer, whether you're a Denon customer, or whether you're a customer of another manufacturer's AVR, you still got to have a Dirac account. Okay. All right? So go in and hit login. So when you go into here, this is where you can see your account, where you download the software, if you have licenses you've already purchased, 
You can activate a license on an AVR. You can see what licenses are being activated, and then you can even shop. So if I go to download, this is where you would download the software for Direct Live. A big thing about this, Cam, is this software is the same software whether you're using um, a Denon or Marantz or any other third party. Okay. So if you're someone out there that has used Direct in the past, the process of how you work through the software and how it how you make your target curves and and how you measure it's all the same the microphone you'd use everything it's all the same the only difference is the software based on the the manufacturer's receiver that you're using will reskin itself with their logos and things like that and also certain um, receivers have more um, capabilities so right now we're starting with um, direct live limited and direct live full but there are some other um, direct capabilities that you may see in the future but right now it's based on what um, is currently working on the model and the brand that you're working on so this is where you would actually download the software now if I go back so now we're looking at um, I can look at licenses so I can look at if I go to like if say we go to mine mine has a lot of stuff so if I go to my licenses I can see all of the different licenses so say I have four licenses for four different AVRs. Now, since you have signed up for the foreign account, uh -huh. now you need to go buy a license. And that, now you want to go back to your, your Durac.com um, backslash um, Denon page okay. to, um, to, to purchase your license for your 4800. So scroll down. And, and of course, we go all the way down, all the way down. We're going to probably do the um, full bandwidth. We don't have to hit buy now. We don't have to hit buy now because I've already actually purchased a license okay. for this particular receiver. Okay? Okay. So, so now um, we've purchased the license, right? And we want to now go on and continue um, setting up the, um, the receiver. Okay. So let's, talk about, so let's talk about how you do that. And um, why don't we fire up uh, the direct software? So just type in direct right there because I've already downloaded the software. And what will happen is um, the new version of the software is called Dirac Live. Right now, if I look at the, the, uh, the menu, it's just spinning because it's looking for a receiver that is compatible with Dirac Live 3. And you'll see right now it says no device is found. That is because the laptop that we're using is not on the same network. Okay. as the AVR that we have in the front. So now the receiver is on the proper, the same network. So when you hit um, search again, refresh it, it should find all of the receivers that are on the network that have um, direct live. So if you look there, Cam, you'll see that there's a 4800 and there's an AV10. So today we're going to be doing the 4800. So select that device. So now when you look at the screen, it actually says Denon. So you'll notice that it literally recognized the software and it made it say Denon. So if you had a Marantz AVR, it would say Marantz. So now it okay. says that you have a, you have a Denon X4800. Currently it's set up as a 5.1.2. Now a tip for you, Cam, before you do your um, get into direct, you want to go in and uh, it does not determine whether your speakers are large or small. It doesn't determine how many speakers you have and everything else. So of course you would go in and before you got started in this, you would do your, you would go to the receiver and do your speaker configurations. If you look at the software, the software says currently it's a X4800 and it's set up for a 5.1.2. Now, if that's not correct, you would have to go in and change it. So for example, in this room, we actually have two subwoofers and we need to make sure that both subwoofers are activated. So the first thing we need to do is set up our, our speaker layout. So okay. if we go to speaker layout and then you press that button, okay. you'll see that it's a 7.1 um, with the zone two, which makes sense because we have five channels. We have five channels and we have um, two heights, which comes out to five plus two equals what, Cam? Seven. Seven. So seven makes, makes sense, all right? Okay. And then we have our our, our fronts, our centers, our surrounds, right? And we don't have surround backs and we have two height speakers and they are Dolby, um, they are height speakers, like the ones that sit on top of the, our dimension towers. So that 
is the proper configuration. Got it. The one thing that is incorrect is you go down to the bottom, it says we have one subwoofer. And Cam, how many subwoofers do we have in this room? We have two. Okay, so we need to go in and change that to two. So go in there and switch that to two, okay? And there's two ways to do it. You can do standard, or if you click to the left, you can also do directional base. We're gonna keep it real simple, and we are going to do um, standard. And, um, and if I go to manual again, we can also determine the sizes. So if I go to um, the crossovers, and I click on there, that will tell you how big the speakers are. Okay. In this room, we are running large, uh, definitive technology floor standing speakers. So pretty much everything is full range. I would probably say to center, let's go set that to small. The old system, by the way, you would have large and small. Now it says either it's full range, which means I can play all the bass, or where do you want me to cut off? Okay. So if you look at it right now, let's, let's cut it off at like 80. There we go, there we go. So we know send all the, um, the, the mains are full range, the rears are full range, the center is 80, and the, 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 the Dolby Height speakers are at 80. Now, Odyssey does this for you automatically. Um, Durac depends on you to make this decision. Okay. So now we have the configuration set up. The other thing, Cam, that I noticed is if you look at the top, it says that we're in speaker preset number one. Okay. But what we want to do is we actually want to be in speaker preset number two. So, so go back into manual, manual. and go down to uh, speaker preset and set that to speaker preset number two. Okay. The reason why we want to do this, Cam, is all of your settings that, you, um, that are imported from the Durac software to the AVR will be stored in, in speaker preset number two. Okay. So we need to make sure that speaker preset number two is also configured as well. Because preset, the, the settings for number one are different than the settings for number two. So you can actually have Odyssey set up under dual speaker preset number one okay. and Durac, Durac set up under dual speaker preset number two and you could actually compare okay. between the two. So, so let's go back in here and right. go back. And let's make sure that the configurations are the same. And if we are good, we have our we have fronts, center, surrounds. We know we have two height speakers and two subwoofers. So now we know that dual speaker preset number two has the proper speaker layout and the proper crossovers. Um, and like I said, Cam, you have to set those manually. Okay. If you have Odyssey, Odyssey does it automatically for you. That's one of the reasons why we chose it is because, like I said, the, the Odyssey is really simple. It's put the microphone in, you follow the instructions as part of the setup assistant, determines if it's large or small, sets your levels, does everything for you, okay. right? Um, uh, but if you want more, more flexibility, you may want to go into Durac because you can really start tweaking on stuff. And there may be things like um, you cannot plug your microphone into the front of the AVR, and Durac allows you to plug the mic into the laptop and because you can plug it into the laptop, the, the receiver can be in another room. And that would be, be one of the reasons why people would go to Durac over Odyssey. If you go back into the software, why don't you hit the, the little um, refresh button again? Okay. Ah, so now if you look at it, you'll see that we went back and refreshed the, the, um, the, the program. And you'll see right now it says 5 point what? Point two, point two. So now it knows that, it, that you have um, five speakers, two subwoofers, and two heights. Okay. You have to go in and make those particular adjustments, okay? So the next thing we need to do is set up a microphone. So okay. if you look on this screen, this is where you would connect the microphones. But we don't have a microphone connected right now, so we need to connect a microphone. So, so why don't we grab um, a microphone and let's talk about, I think I have my microphone, so hold on a second. Let me go grab that. All right. As I mentioned, you need to get a mic. So, so this is actually one of the most popular mics utilized for um, Durac calibration. You need to have a USB mic, which means a USB so you can plug it into your computer. Okay. This is a mini DSP UMIK1, and it runs about $79. There's a better version of this called a UMIK2. That's about a little bit less than $200 a little bit more precise. But for what we're doing, um, Direc actually recommends this microphone. Okay. They think it's a great, it's a great microphone. Okay. Um, and if you look at the box like he's holding up, it actually says on the box, if I could show it, across the box it says that um, it works great for Direct Live as one of the other options. 
And of course, you need a microphone stand. Okay. Um, if you pick a microphone like one of these, you, you need to make sure that you pick a USB microphone that has a, a microphone calibration file. If you look here on the software, you'll see it has the option at the bottom for you to add a calibration file. Okay. So this right now, currently the microphone's not set up. So let's plug in this microphone first. Another question while we do this, Cam, people always ask, you know, um, which direction should the microphone be pointed? Now, when it comes to these types of microphones, you can point the microphone at the position, you know, so say you're pointing it at a speaker. Okay. If you wanted to measure the frequency response of that speaker or maybe that speaker. Okay. But because we're doing surround sound, we're trying to get the sound from all the speakers, so you want to point the mic straight up. So that way it gets all of the speakers that are in the space, okay? Why is that not? Love it. Uh, close enough. Okay. And does it matter if you set it for ear level or not ear level? That is a, that is a great point. Um, you want the microphone to be at ear level. So say like where we're at, that's our ear level. But most likely you're sitting on a couch. That's probably going to be closer to to ear level. Okay. Okay. So now we take the mic and we plug it into the side of the computer, and magically. Lo and behold, another microphone popped up, and it has the calibration uh, information in it. So the way you would get the calibration soft um, program is on the box, there is a serial number. Um, you will log on to um, minidsp.com. Okay. You would say that I have this type of mic, right. and it will ask you what is the serial number for this mic, and it will give you the ability to download a calibration of this mic. Okay. And there's two. One would be, one of them is called 90 degree, and one of them is kind of standard. Since right. this is pointed straight up and down, the one you want to use is the 90 degree. Okay. So, so what I did was I actually loaded the 90 degree microphone calibration file into my computer. And because I did it before, it already had the file. Okay. If it didn't have the file, you would basically click here under one of those, and then you would just load your file. But it's already, uh, it's already loaded, all right? Okay. So this is the mic we're going to use. All right, so you mic one. You mic one. Got it. Okay. Now we can move on to the next step, which is called volume calibration. Okay. So go to volume calibration. Okay. And what this is, if you look here, there's a bunch of um, knobs and sliders. What this next th um, thing is, is we're not going in and adjusting the final output of the speakers. All we're trying to get is a, a good volume level for the microphone to pick up the sound. Okay. okay. So if you look here, you have a microphone gain. You have a master output. If I turn the master output, that's going to turn the receiver's volume up and down. And then you also have every speaker that's in the room. So if I go here and I hit front left, hit the play button on the front left right there. And now oh. I, turn, I turn it up. point are you trying to get to on here? Okay, so that's a good question. He, um, what point are you trying to get to? We're trying to get the microphone readings for all of the speakers to kind of be in the middle. Okay. So what you do is you adjust the volume and the mic gain or even this little level here because we want it to be in the middle. So okay. we know that this one's in the middle. Then we go to the next one. Okay. And if you look, that's pretty good. Go to the next one. Okay, good. So if you look, Cam, you'll see that after what we got done, doing all of the channels are about equal. There is no set level that they should be. They should all just be in the middle. 
The goal is to give the microphone a good reading. Okay. So that's what this is for. Got it. Doing the process after it runs all of its tests, then, uh, then Durac will do all of the level matching. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So this is just to get a good measurement. And you want all of those to be in kind of the middle. All okay. right. So now go to proceed to select arrangement. So if you look here, Cam, you'll see that there's a couple of different arrangements. So go to tightly focused. Focus. You'll see that it's like, okay, if you only have one person sitting in a chair. Then you go to focused imaging. This would be maybe you have a, maybe two people on a couch or you want to be able to move around a little bit more. And then the last one is wide imaging. And that would be if you want it to have a bigger, wider listening space. Under the Denon and Marantz receivers um, speaker preset number two, you have the option of doing three, um, uh, saving three different Dirac um, settings okay. or, 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 or calibrations. So if you wanted to, you could to make one that was really tightly focused, like okay. what you have here for when it's just you. Okay. And then you may want to go in and do one wide for the family. And, you, and I'll show you at, at the end, once we're done, how under the receiver you can go into the menu system and you can switch between the different direct presets. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, um, because there's two of us, let's go, um, let's, actually let's do focused imaging. Um, the main difference between these, by the way, Cam, is as you move from focused to narrow to tightly, it's how many points are going to be measured. So let's do tight to start. So tightly is showing nine measurements. Nine positions. measurements. And if you go to Im um, imaging focus, what does that focus one show? Focus imaging is showing 13 measurement positions. Uh -huh. Then when clicking to wide imaging, I'm noticing that it says 17 measurement positions. Okay, so why don't we just do, in the essence of time, let's just do tightly focused. Okay. So, so if you look, nine measurements. If you ask the guys from, from Durac how many measurements you do as a minimum, they're going to tell you nine. It doesn't take that much longer, um, but um, nine is what they want. So we're going to pick that one. So now go to proceed to measure. The very first measurement you should do is your dream seat, where your where your head is going to be if you were going to listen to something. So in this room, let's make believe this is exactly where my chair, where, well, I think my head is going to be when I'm sitting in my couch. Okay. And that would be that very first measurement. Got it. After that, then you would just follow those measurements. So these are kind of that's in front, that's in front, that's behind. That's behind, that's behind, that's behind. Okay. And why would you do so many measurements for one spot? The reason why you do that is um, I could, if I, I, so say this is my perfect spot, but what if I lean back or I'm sitting kind of like this? If you give the system a bigger area to look at, it'll do a better job of making sure that it sounds great wherever you're sitting. So, so um, and if you went back and we looked at the other one, there's more measurements and they're sp spread out more because you have to take more of the room into account. Just like um, on Odyssey, we tell you to take multiples. For Durac, you need to take multiples because it needs to get a better sense of the room and what's around you. So, but that, but that space that we're measuring is going to be smaller. Got it. All right. So let's start the first measurement which is the middle one and so we already said that this is our this is our main position all right okay so go in and hit select measure selected position hey cam the other thing i want to point out is if we look at the screen here you'll see that it says uh calibration and process okay. so while you're making these measurements and the computer is telling the receiver to make a tone and then that microphone is being measured and then it's feeding that information from the microphone to the receiver, you will get this little indication on your screen that the calibration process has begun. So now when you hit measure selected position, let's go.
So now it ran through the whole measurements. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that this is all of the speakers. So I can see the left front, I can see that the center channel, the right, the surround. So that's an overlay of all of the speakers. So now let's go and move the microphone to the next measurement. So now we're going to take the microphone and we're going to move it. So right now it's saying move it to the front left. Bottom left. So we got one spot here, we got one spot there, we'll do one spot right here, okay. and then we'll probably do one here and one here. So hit measure. So you is can, this the one that you press? Yeah, so when you hit the timer, so if you click that, you can see that you can set a timer. So if you want to leave, you got 50 seconds to leave the room. The main thing is if you stay in the room, Okay, so let's read this spot. So now it's calculating measurements number for spot number two. So if you look here, it, so now we have two measurements done. And, it, and the same thing, it'll tell you under here that it is successful. If you look at the icon here, it's successful and it's been saved to the project. And of course, you can look at each of the particular positions. So now it's telling you to go to front right, top front right. Front top Right. So we're going to go through and do all of these settings so you don't sit here and listen to it go whoop for forever. And then we'll be back after we make our, our measurements. Okay? So fire away, Cam. Okay, we are back. And we've actually done all of the measurements. If you want to redo them, say you made a mistake, you can go back and remeasure. So say you need to remeasure one because um, you, you're not really ha happy with the reading or your dog barked or someone came in the room. Okay. You could remeasure it or you can, of course, just clear data and remeasure it. But, it. We're, but I think the measurements we have are good enough for today um, for us to move on to the next process. Okay. So now go to filter design. There we go. So lo and behold, we have, it's, it's actually loading up all of our filters. See right now we're just showing you the, the left speaker. So I can look at the left, the right, um, I can look at my center channel, I can look at my surrounds, my surround lefts, so I can see all of the different, all of the different ones. One of the things I like about, about Durac, every room has what's called room gain. You get this big bump in bass from loading it into a corner. Durac looks at that and says, okay, you want that big bump in bass you probably like that big bump in bass. Don't take the bass away, and it makes a curve based on that response. So if you want to adjust the target curve is, a, is, a, um, is what they believe would be best, but you could take the lever and you could determine how much of the target, how much you bass you want. But most of the time, the system tries to put the bass in that you have. You don't want to do a lot of boosting, so you want to keep it where it's right around that range where you're not adding a lot of extra boost. And that determines the roll off at the end. So, you, so if you look at the end, at the end over here, you can see that you're, you're, if you want to roll it off a little bit, which people seem to find more pleasing. Okay. Okay. So you could pick the one that Direct Live made, or you could make your own target curve. Okay. So this is now the left and the, the front left and the front right. Okay. And if you look here, I can go in and I can build a target curve. So if I want all that base back. I can go in here and I can adjust that. So I can go in here and I can build my own target curve because I say, you know, you never want to boost, right? But if you look here, there's a lot of extra base there that we're not using. 
So if I want to add another, another data point, I can right click and add another control point. So right now, this curve, I'm up about, there's a lot of base in the room, I want that back. So I can build my own target curves here. What is this box? Oh, I guess you can't see on screen. Load a target curve or save a target curve. Okay. So, so what that's for is say you had, you've already done the room before, or you know you've done a system like this before. Uh, and you know kind of the, the, the frequency response you're looking for and um, that sounds good to you okay. or to your client. You can actually save that, that curve and then if you do another system, you could give that same type of curve. Got it. So, so some people say, okay, I want a little bit more roll off here, a little bit of a peak here, a little bit of a dip there. You can go in and make your own and then just save it and you can discontinue to load that particular curve. And I have the ability to do curtains. What a curtain is, is if I, don't, if I, want, to, if I want to limit where I want the filtering. So right now, if I said I only want to go to 1,000, I could set it at 500 and see what that sounds like, and then I can go full range. So that's what the curtain is, right? Okay. So why don't we just stick to the one to system eight? Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do, Cam, is we're gonna go, um, uh, if you go to impulse response. This actually shows you the impulse responses for the different speakers. Say we went through and we tweaked on it and we did our own target curve or we utilized a curve that they made or we've uploaded curves and set curtains. Now we are good to go and we are happy with this particular setup. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna export it. So export the filter. So when I export the filter, as I mentioned on a Denon and Marantz AVR, it's going to be stored under speaker preset number two, but there's three slots that are in there. So let's go in here and add it to an empty slot. Okay, so we're gonna export that filter. And what's gonna happen is now it's going to export the filter to the receiver. And you'll see that it's exporting the, the filter to the receiver's um, uh, Dirac slot under dual speaker preset number two. So if you look here, it says that the file, it has been transferred, right? and the process is complete. So, so now, Cam, we can actually look at that stuff in the AVR. So where is the remote for the AVR? So, so go into the setup menu okay. and go up to audio. Click in there. Um, and you'll see right there, it says a selection called Di Direct Live. So let's go down to Direct Live. Direct Live. And this is where you would oh. see your filters. There it is. So it's under dual speaker preset number two, Stagecoach uh, Denon DT, right? Oh, by the way, Cam, if Odyssey was set up, if we went to the menu system, you would see the Odyssey would be ungrade as well. Okay. Okay. But right now, dual, um, this for this one right now, we have not done an Odyssey um, calibration for this receiver, so it is grayed out. Got it. Okay. You could have... Um, Odyssey set up for uh, preset number one and say maybe you have dynamic volume and, and dynamic EQ in because you want to play it at lower volumes at night without disturbing others. Okay. You could utilize maybe dual speak preset number one with Odyssey, right? Then you can go to dual speaker preset number two and you could have, like I said, the tight money seat one that we just did. Mm -hmm. oh, and then you can maybe make another um, filter for family. Got it. Right? So, so if you think about it, theoretically, you could have four different configurations in this receiver okay. um, um, that way. All right? So now we are, that's pretty much the full um, process for utilizing Direct Live with a, a Denon or Marantz AVR. So hopefully you guys have gotten um, uh, a good understanding of um, uh, Direct Live and how to set it up on a Denon or Marantz AVR. So take care and we will talk to you soon.